one of the differences that uh, I think I had with teachers, with, with my teachers, uh, and again, this, this shuhari concept that if you, if you only take it to where something was, it's never going to grow. If, if you look at all the, the heads of the different systems, and you look at the evolution, it's the evolution of traditional martial arts. It's not, it's not something that's been stagnant. It's constantly evolving. Each has added something different. Odo's addition was the, the weapons. And not only the addition of the weapons, but the ability to take what weapon, a weapons program that came from, from Chinin, Matayoshi, and Tara, which had different body mechanics, and to meld that into the movement concepts we do in Okinawa Kempo, which is primarily on the Matayoshi side, but with a uh, use of the Seisandachi is the dominant stance, where Matayoshi tends to do more shikodachi. Uh, and so the techniques transition a bit because of the basics, uh, the foundation. Uh, that was, to me, a, a key thing. Yet he kept, he kept the essence, the, the, the key thing of each of those katas the same. He didn't change the kata, he changed a little the stancing and the, uh, the execution but not, not the pattern, not what's happening there. And I think that's, that's important. Um, one of the things that the Okinawans, for the most part, didn't do a lot of, and, and don't, in Oda's sense it was typical, didn't do a lot of basics. You learn by osmosis. Uh, and I think that's, that's hurt over the years, because some people pick it up and others don't. And it's this idea of loss of face. They didn't want you to feel feel bad, so and and a cultural uh, lack of understanding was there. We as Westerners, if I ask you, was that okay, and you say yes, that's okay, I take that to mean it's okay. Okay, now I mean that's that may be. A convoluted thinking approach, but we tend to be more direct. If I, if it wasn't okay, I would assume that you would tell me, "No, Bruce, that's not okay. You're using the wrong foot. Uh, you know, the hand should not be behind your head. It should be in front." Okay, but when you tell me it's okay, I, I think I'm doing it right. That's not necessarily the case with an Okinawan teacher. If you ask them, "Is this okay?" and they say, yes, it's okay, that doesn't mean that it's okay. It may mean that it's okay. It also may mean that, well, it's sort of close enough to what I recognize, uh, and you didn't fall down and you didn't hurt anybody else, so yeah, it's okay, <laughs> but it's not really what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. And so I think that, that is something that affected many of the, of the systems over there, because you had a limited training time. Um, you know, most of the American students were not in the dojo for 15 years over there. We, they were in there for, for their tours of duty, and then, and then gone. And while they're there, they're only there just like here. They're in just a few hours a day or whatever, because they had duties to do on the base. Um, so you're, you're picking up, and it's all your perceptions. Mm -hmm. And so culture and differences, you know, flavor what we what we take from that encounter. And I think that was one of the big things. Trias's focus with the basics helped me unlock and then Marie unlock, I think, some of the things that Oda was doing. Because we would look at it and not just like what was on the outside, but what was happening underneath? How was he moving? Where was the weight distribution? This and that. And then would say, you know, sensei, well, you're doing something different. And then he would go, ah, you see. Yeah, sensei. I mean, uh, you know, oh, you're okay. No, no, sensei. I, I, want, I want to do your way. And that would be, that would be the key to him that, oh, you're, you're ready now to, to learn what I really wanted to teach you. Okay, uh, and it was they sort of all had that. It was like, okay, this is your baby karate. 
Okay, and then when you when you learn how to speak enough that you can tell me that you think there's something more, then I'll, I'll give you a little more, and then when you really want to know how it is, you'll let me know you're ready for it, and, and we'll, we'll go to there. Uh, so there was that evolution. It's not one thing. Yet I think a lot of the, the Americans were looking at, here it is. Uh, I've known some people that, that used to, and one gentleman in particular, uh, great great practitioner, but he used to keep a little notebook, and it was like on such and such a day since they said this was it. And from that point on, that was it. Because that's what Sensei said. Well, that might have been it when you had a hard time even standing, let alone moving. But it wasn't it. It was far from it. You know? But that became it for life for him. And then his thing was, well, it really, I, I got it all. Where, where is it? I'm not finding it. And so then he went on and tried to pick up more copy from different systems and everything else because he was finding, he was trying to hunt for it and didn't realize it, it was already there all the time, but he never discovered it. You know, and, and when he went to these other systems, he was just getting the, the baby it here, the baby step it here. Okay. Um, so I try to focus with a lot of basics <coughs> and use that. <coughs> One of the things we, we, we I believe strongly in is, and, and this comes from, from I guess both Master Trius and, and Odo's influence, uh, is this becoming a better martial artist. In other words, be true to your system and style. You have to have strong roots, but, but don't wear blinders. Um, so since the first time we had a, a our annual training here, we've always had tried to bring in multiple instructors, multiple traditional instructors. Uh, they're not teaching kata from their various systems. We're not trying to make everybody, because we bring Mr. Merriman in, uh, who's a renowned goju practitioner, that we're going to turn everybody to goju people. No. Um, but when we all do the same things in, in concept and application and bunkai and etc. And so in drills and whatever. And it, it, Everybody can train in that, and that gives the students a greater understanding because each system came up, again, limited by how it evolved. Um, we've talked in the past about Okinawa Kempo being strongly influenced by the fact that it came up through the school system. Uh, the Ichu uh, Middle School uh, was where it, it was first started with Chamahana Shiro Kensuyabu and Higashiona as the as the three major teachers, uh, you know, Shiro and, and Yago as the as the two basically the, the gym teachers, and Higashiyama as the, the director of physical education, you might say. That was Shuri and, and uh, Naha influences there, um, but because it came to the school system, it was very fistic oriented. Where if you look at uh, Matsumura, Seto, uh, Shok Sokens lineage, you'll see much more of the open hand, the uh, uh, spear hand, uh, tiger claw, etc. Same with Goju. Goju didn't come through the school system, so you have a lot more of the close-in open hand things. So it, you know, these exposures, also getting Aiki Jiu-Jitsu and Jiu-Jitsu uh, exposures, help people understand more about their own system. Because the body only moves certain ways. Um, 